And welcome back to the Schaefer Center here in Waxahachie, Texas. Part two of the doubleheader is just minutes away. Sagu Lions hosting the MacU Evangels. Right now we're going to go courtside with our very own Kristen Urban and head coach Delton Dill. Thanks, Sean. Coach Jill, you suffered two tough road losses this past week. What adjustments need to be made going into tonight's game? Um, I think we just need to play well together, finish, compete for 40 minutes, and it's happy. I'm happy. we're happy to be here, so it's good to play at home. Yeah. What's it going to take to defeat Mid-America Christian? They're a very good, well-balanced offense, very well coached, so we just got to play, you know, uh, defend at a high level, rebound the basketball, take care of it, have fun, play with some joy, all that stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Coach Jill, and good luck tonight. Back to you, John. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you, Coach Dill, for taking the time. This is going to be a revenge match. Earlier in the season, Sagu met Macu up in their home gym and took a, a pretty ugly loss. But that's a different Sagu team now. The chemistry, the locker room, the attitude, all in different places. Sagu has dropped a couple as of late. They're five and five out of their last 10. And they're sitting in sixth place. Tied, three-way tie for sixth place. And you see that there on your, your uh, graphic, the Sooner Athletic Conference men's standing. Waylon Baptist having a great year. John Brown as well. Langston dropping a lot as of late. They were ranked uh, number four in the nation when they came in to the Schaefer Center here and Sagu easily won. So this team has a lot of potential, a lot of upside. The downside, if you were looking at the pros and cons, the downside would be the inexperience, the youth, lots of freshmen, Lots of sophomores. Just a couple senior and juniors. So Coach Delton Dill is having to deal with that inexperience factor and build chemistry with this very talented team. If you were to look at them on paper, maybe one of the most talented teams that Sagu has ever had. But the chemistry is just not there yet. I'm going to go courtside with the opening prayer the national anthem, and the starting lineups. Move your hats as we honor God in prayer. Then please remain standing and face the flag as we honor our nation with the singing of the national anthem by second assistant athletic trainer, Danielle Litter. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time here. Lord, I ask that you watch over all the players and officials, protect them from all injury and all harm. Lord, I ask that you guide us on our travels back home as well. We thank you for everything that we that you do you have done in our lives. We ask all these things in your name. Amen.
And now the starting lineups for the Avengers. Travis High School, Houston, Texas, guard. Nicholas Mason, Frisco Liberty High School, Frisco, Texas, guard. Joshua Kashila, Ulysses Trinity High School, Luanda Angola, guard. Darren Sims, Trinity Christian School, Cedar Hill, Texas, guard. Mitchell McMullen, Clemens High School, San Antonio, Texas, guard. Makai Zolkowski, Yellowstone Christian Centurions, Wolf Point, Montana, guard. Darian Davis, Lakeview Centennial High School, Garland, Texas, forward. Kobe Bryant Rice, North Dallas High School, Dallas, Texas, forward. Jalen Patello, Arlington Martin High School, Arlington, Texas, forward. Keldrichi Akobo Dre Hilgu, Miskipo T High School, Lagos, Nigeria, forward. Boaz Williams, V Prep Academy, Houston, Texas, forward. Adrian Palacios, Cedar Valley Community College, Dallas, Texas, forward. And there you have it, the pregame festivities are over. It's time for jump ball, a little action. Saigu so with no contest of the jump ball, goes to Mackey, which means Saigu will take the first possession. Black with the first jumper, a little teardrop drops in. McHugh's up two. Cam Hill getting it started. Nicholas Mason from the corner. Bad pass. Turnover. Lions. McHugh ball. Mason makes up for it, intercepts the pass down low. Makes it happen. Not too many people can stop Nicholas Mason. Big defensive play by Cam Hill. I mean, that was the other Cameron, but he misses the easy put by Cam Hill does. Three point shot by Black. Black has all five Mac U points. Black makes his move. Sagu with the rebound. Nicholas Mason up top, trying to get an isolation to Darian Davis. Davis out to McGee. McGee with the fake behind the back pass. 
Goes up with the layup, gets his own rebound, gets blocked. That foul's gonna be on Mac U. As Mason gets the rebound and tries to go back up. But th before the shot, That foul was on Javon Perry. Davis not clearing the inbound pass. Bogle with the block. Kobe Rice signaling he's got it, but good pass into Cameron Hill. Big time three by Bogle. McGee to Mason. Oh, Kobe Bryant Rice from the baseline. Pretty, making it look easy. That was actually very difficult as a right-hander on the outside of the backboard, but he makes it look easy. I thought I was gonna go against Darian Davis. Dominic Ford will shoot two. Ford misses his first free throw. And converts the second. Back you up by three. McGee brings the ball up. Gets it to Mason. Mason tries to clear out. Goes around. Misses his easy three-foot jumper. Kind of rare. The ninth best shooter in the land. Hook shot, bounces around the rim, comes off. Darian Davis gets the rebound. Lions start the push. Hold it up. Nick Mason down to Kobe Bryant. Rice on the block. Rice loses the ball. Errantly throws it out of bounds. Matthew Ball at half court. Bogle with another three-point try. It's off. Sawyer gets the putback. Good pass back by Bogle. Darian Davis with a jab step. Pretty move down to the baseline. Makes it look easy with a six foot jumper. Mackey up by three with the ball. Black. The Sawyer. Sawyer dribble drive. Dumps off. Gets it. Makes himself available. Gets his own rebound, but it's stolen by the Lions. Lions are pushing. Now holding Darian Davis with the ball. Tries to see Rice in the paint. Makes a bad pass. Dominic Ford. Saw the cutter, just couldn't get it to him in time. Deflected off a lion. 
Still Mac U ball. Perry trying to make something happen. Bogle misses another three-point try. Gary Davis trying to get a post move down low, but does it. KO with the rebound out to Mason. Mason, big step. Looks out to a wide open Davis. Davis flushes from about 19 feet. Counted as three. KO protecting the rim. Big block. But the men in stripes are going to legislate a foul. Second foul number 40, KO in his first. They are going to charge KO with that foul. Perry misses the first. Dearney Sims comes in. Cam Hill. Nope. Strike that. Darian Davis to the bench. Moving position players around now. Running a three-guard set with two bigs. McGee will bring the ball out. Get Nicholas Mason with the travel. Let's see. See if we can see his feet. It's going to be hard. Can't see. Looked like he picked up his pivot foot. One point ball game. Mac you up with their new lineup. Black and Bogle stay in. That's a travel. That's Charles Beauregard trying to make a move down the middle. They get him for leaving his pivot foot before he dribbled. Cameron McGee bringing the ball up. For Sheila. McGee, long three. Sims. Beats Mac U to the rebound. Sims makes his own way. And they're going to put it on the floor. Sims wanted the NBA continuation. Kashila with the baseline jumper. Big bounce off the rim. Hits the shot clock. Officials rule it out of bounds. KO swinging wildly, misses, but protects the rim. Mason with the rebound, trying to make something happen. Picks up his dribble, 
Gets it off to McGee. McGee gets it out to Kashila. Kashila down on the baseline. Back to McGee. McGee's got a good look at it, but misses. Good run. That was Beauregard with a great layup with defense all in his face. Brand new lineup for Mac U. Nicholas Mason, it's gonna be hard to stop him in a zone. He will crush a zone. McGee all over. Great patience by this Mackey offense. Second team. Beauregard puts up the shot, rattles it home, and says, Feed me some more. Very well played by a very patient Mackey offense. There you see a little bit of a look into a couple other games going on in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Wayland and Oklahoma Panhandle State hosting Langston University. And it looks like Wayland is playing host to the Central Christian Tigers. Tigers working on a little upset. A lot of game left to play there, but Wayland Baptist, as you see, is just 12 and 2, sitting lonely at number one. Two games ahead of the next best team. Mason bringing the ball up for the Lions. Looks like a 2-1-2 two -two zone. Kashila gets it off quick. Good pass from Mason. Kashila likes what he sees in that zone. Those wings will be wide open when Mason penetrates. Beauregard almost baked one in from the top. Everybody knows the bank is closed on Saturday. Kashila. Upshaw. Gets rid of it. That's off Hammonds. Be Lions Bar. Mitch McMullen. Zen Kashila gets the ball. Sees the opening. Back out to Davis. Davis already hit one. Comes up a little short. Darney Sims crashes the board. They're going to get him for over the back. I say that's a 50-50 ball, ref. Let him play it. Upshaw to Beauregard, back to Upshaw. 
Upshaw saw Hammond in the middle. Too much defense. Errant pass. Kashila gets it, takes it coast to coast. We're going to say it's Lions ball. But I believe when we see this replay, it will have gone off of Nicholas Mason. He's out of bounds, so he touches right there. It should have been out of bounds as soon as he touched it. Lions get away with one. Mitch McMullen setting up the offense to Sims. Sagu spreading the court wide. Mason. So quick down the line. Goes in, misses the dunk, but due to a strong foul on top of the head. Now it's Beauregard, his first foul. Both Matthew and Sagu have very deep benches. We've already seen 11 players for Matthew on the floor with significant minutes. And nine players because Jalen Patello is out for this game for Sagu. Mason converts. Great defense by the combo Mason and Sims. Sims comes up with the rebound. Sims sees an open middle. So quick down the middle with a slash. Gets fouled before. He gets the shot off, misses. So he's going to the line for two. You get Upshaw going out. Gibbons going out. Bogle and Black in for Mackey. you being patient in offense. Lefty, nice. It's Mr. Black. He's got seven. Kobe Rice. Thank you with the rebound. Wide open three. Missed by Khalil Thompson. Josh Kashila with the short three himself. Back to Mac U. It's up and down. Mac U trying to. We're going to get Mac U with a little lean in. That's Anthony Black. I believe that's going to be his second, his second foul. It is. Looked like he dipped his shoulder down a little too much. And was rung up with the charge. Cam Hill trying to make some 
something happened. It looks like he's going to be issued a charge himself. And it's Oscar season. I think that was Perry who gets the Oscar nomination. Not sure. I didn't see the number there. Kind of a flop. No, Perry is, is guarding. Aha. That was Anthony Black. Defense by Danny Sims. Cam Hill to Sims. Sims back to Hill. Hill penetrates, gives it off to Kobe Rice. Bogle tries to reach around, still no good. But Rice misses the easy four footer. And Mr. Perry from downtown. Kevin McGee back in. And they're going to get him for a travel. I didn't see that in real time. Maybe I missed his foot uh, sliding or something, but let's see if we can see it here. He comes to a stop. I think they're, you couldn't really see it, but maybe they thought that uh, pivot foot slid just a little bit. Perry with the fake of the three, gets it out to Bogle. Bogle can shoot. He does, converts the three from deep in the corner. Devon Perry. With his second foul. A little too close to Mr. Mr. Kashila. Not in the bonus yet. Just one more for Mac U. Sagu will be shooting their one and one. Mason tries an acrobatic shot. Not even close to being squared up. Oh, good defense by Davis. Nicholas Mason picks it up, gets it forward to Cam Hill. Cam Hill to Cameron McGee. McGee making it happen. Misses the easy two-footer. But he gets his own rebound. Resetting the offense. Gets it out to Kashila. Thank you, applying good pressure. Cross court pass to McGee. McGee way up short. They're going to get him. They're going to get Mac U with the foul. And that's Charles Beauregard. Thank you, 
Coach Josh Gamblin beside himself with that call. So Cameron McGee shoots three here. Actually, I'm going to say that was before the shot. And he only shot at one and one. Beauregard with the rebound. Goes back up. Very excited for himself with that conversion. Oh, Mitch Mason. Javon Perry gets it down low. Missed easy. Two easy missed putbacks by Daniel William. McGee tries to squeeze it in quickly. Mason gets bumped in the back there. And now he will shoot a one and one. 18 fouls against Mac U, just 14 fouls against Sagu. And that is Mr. Charles Bogart's third foul. I imagine he'll be sitting the rest of this half out. Long free throw attempt by Mason. Mitch Mullen, Nick Mullen. Great defense applied. Forces Khalil Thompson to make an error. And here we go, William with an easy steal, goes coast to coast. Coach Delton Dill says, I need to get a timeout right now. Things are getting away from us. Seven point deficit. We need to talk about this. Great effort by Mackey there. Get the steal. The pressure's been good all night. Both teams have been both patient, which is kind of uncharacteristic. Both of these teams like to get out and run, averaging almost 80 points a game. Some interesting notes about Mac U. Mr. Charles Beauregard is their leading scorer, but they spread it around, so a lot of them are close, but Beauregard right now is uh, coming in at 12 and a half points per game. You see at halftime, Central Christian up by four at Wayland Baptist. That's very hard to do. Wayland's playing great basketball this year, as they do every year, but especially good this year. Mr. Bogle for Mac U is the leading rebounder coming in at seven even, seven rebounds per game. It's very strong. Mr. Anthony Black leads his team in assist and steals. Almost two and a half assists and almost two and a half steals per game. He is a defensive giant as well as a great floor general. Kashila out top. McGee going to try to make something happen. Sees K.O. from the three-point line. Not really the shot you want from your eight-footer.
And he's going to get the, no, actually, it's going to be a violation on Mac U. That is going to be Lions ball. to slow it down just a bit. Sims looks for an open. Mason, wide open for three. Really short. I don't even believe he drew iron. In other words, air ball. His first foul. That's an off-the-ball foul. Kale will go to the line. And shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Good form by the tall youngster. Just off to the right. Oh, the rim protector. That's why he's in there. Just tosses it. Great save by Mason. That was good penetration by Cam Hill. Drew the defenders all down on him. Left Dernie Sims wide open. Sims bricks the three-pointer. McGee playing some full court man-to-man. -man. Himself. Oh, Bogle pins it on the board. William made that shot a little bit harder than he needed to. Gets extra style points and the two. And that's a push from Dominic Ford. He got beat way out. Cam Hill just goes right around him. Kevin Hill to shoot two. Great rotation. Great defense up top. Bogle with a step back. Too long. Sims gets it off. No good. That's halftime. 
Lions down by seven. Not a high scoring affair at all. Kristen Urban is down courtside with one of the assistant coaches. Kristen, what does he have to say about the first half? Thanks, Sean. Coach Cochran, Mac, you took the lead this first half. What are some things that need to be worked on in the second to come out with the win today? We just got to stay active on defense. We're really good at the first and seconds, and then, you know, we kind of drop off a little bit. But we're really active right now, and I like it. We're passing it on offense. So we're going to get their best in the second half. They're, I think, ninth in conference, top eight get in, so we're going to get their best shot. What will you be telling the guys in the locker room? Just to stay active, keep crashing, keep getting hands on balls. That's the little things that matter in the second half to win you games. Thanks, Coach, and good luck. Back to you, John. Thanks, Kristen, Coach Cochran. They got to do better on the offensive side of things. Got to produce more points, missing a lot of shots, not taking good shots. Uh, not, not, it's not that they're not taking good shots, I should say. It's uh, the conversion process has not been there like they are used to. And MacU is a very quick team. They're getting back on defense, uh, stifling a bit of the Lions fast break type of play. And Coach Delton Dill really likes to coach and win the possession game. So he likes to get up and down. And now his team is being forced and relegated to a half court offense. And the Lions are just struggling a little bit to get the conversions. We'll be back with more stats and a little more second half thoughts after these messages. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. What the NAIA has figured out through all their character and leadership programs is let's develop these players as men and women of character and by doing so these players will ultimately reach their ceiling.
This is a faith venture. We may yet face challenges, but I want you to know something. Ours is a worthy mission. It's a kingdom mission. And the Pentecostal church needs Sagu. Our Native American churches need Sagu AIC. Let's persevere to victory. May each of us maintain the reputation of one who knows their stuff. They expect us to be the best. May this institution always have that reputation. This institution deserves the best for me and you because this is God's ministry and He deserves the best. The students that God has entrusted to me and you deserve our best because we have accepted the responsibility of mentor and discipler. Our churches and parents of students deserve our best because they've entrusted their children to us as stewards, many at great personal financial sacrifice. If we strive for and achieve excellence, then we will be rewarded with a harvest of students in the days to come. May we never forget that any combination of the most effective leadership traits that does not include spiritual character are temporal and will provide no enduring legacy. That is the one thing that is going to distinguish us and give us the ability to make a difference in the days to come. We desperately need God's presence. They need to see us model a spirit-filled life. Oh God, give us revival and let it begin with me. Let it begin with you. We each need to pray that prayer. May God grant us the skill to develop a visionary plan that will bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. May we never lose the capacity to envision and believe for a big dream. As population increases, God will most certainly call more men and women to take the gospel around the world. Therefore, spirit-filled Pentecostal institutions are needed now more than ever. School districts, businesses, governmental roles, and all kinds of professions need even more godly men and women to fill positions with excellence as salt and light. And there's no better place to train marketplace ministers than right here. We need to get as many kids in these doors as we possibly can. It's God's will for us to rise up in faith. May your heart for God and personal faith increase. May your influence and favor with students rise to a level you've never experienced. May your families experience health and peace, and may your needs be met. May God miraculously provide for our campus. May God grant us creativity and wisdom and discernment and understanding and favor. Together, if we will work and give God the chance, we're going to see awesome things happen on this campus. Our best days are ahead of us. You know, the life of a teacher is not easy, but if you know that you have a good foundation and that you're called to what you're doing, then there's no limit on who you can touch and change. Equipping students to change lives as teachers in the classroom has taken a front row seat at SAGU since 1984. Today, with certification from the Texas Education Agency, the department continues to excel, an annual average of more than 200 students in the program, eight undergraduate degree tracks, and seven options for a master's in education. And when these graduates walk the line, most of them march right into administrative roles or the classroom. They're principals that we talk with. They want our students. They want our students in their classrooms. They want them working with their kids. They want to hire them once they graduate from here. A big part of that is the character that our students bring and the values that they hold. They're, they're known for that reputation of being very professional. So what's the SAGU secret? What makes students here so prepared to enter the education field? One reason could be the style of learning, less traditional lectures, and more of this. Okay, I think we should do y'all's book because our book has like, no, like nothing for vocabulary in it. The door slams shut, startling us, and learn everything we decided. What do we classify it as? Uh, information um, yeah. yes. because that's going to turn into your regular lesson plan. So we have turned our curriculum into more of a case study um, scenario of sorts where we say okay this is what's going on in your classroom and then they might have to act out how they would solve the problem or they might have to actually put a lesson plan together and then actually teach the lesson. That is a pretty standard environment in my classroom and we talked about some gray areas and how we can use that gray area for the benefit of you know being a Christian. You can also have a Bible on your desk. And those groups had to teach us what they knew about their section of the law. You can't really teach it as um, 
your belief, but you can teach it as history. At uh, Lakeview Outdoor Learning, we have students who go uh, and assist the counselors at the camp. They are going to go and observe the counselors teaching during the first half of the day, then during the second half, they will actually be assisting in teaching the courses. So if it's one through five, that's an acid. Well, like some of the vocabulary words that they include. We were working on lesson plans for a specific type of guided reading lesson plan, and they were working on particular parts together and researching. It was more of a planning, what you would see in a team planning type environment that you might see in a school setting actually. An education degree from SAGU gives graduates a unique passport to serve around the world. Educators can go into any country and they have a ticket into forming connections and relationships with people that no one else can in any other type of ministry situation. It is a mission field in and of itself. It's, it's embedded in the words that you say, the actions that you have, not only with your students but with colleagues, administrators, families, and it's never just about the teaching itself, it's always about the people and the relationships that you build. They do see it as educational ministry that they are going there not to teach to the average student, but to individualize their classes, to meet the unique learning style of every student, to help everyone have success. And that success is happening across the entire K through 12 spectrum. SAGU graduates are learning to design instruction and assessment-based curriculum, create positive classroom environments, and develop student management strategies. We're growing this reputation, not just from what we're doing in the classroom, but also what we're doing as professionals in the field. In my opinion, there's no better place to study education than SAGU. Because when you walk into the education department or when you're interacting with faculty, you become part of a family. And you become part of a family that is going to be with you throughout the rest of your life. The education program at SAGU training teachers to change the world one child at a time. I go back to J.C. Watts' uh, definition of character that he was taught by his grandmother when he was a little boy. He said, character is doing the right thing when nobody's looking. FCA has taught me how to lead. It's taught me how to be a leader, taught me how to present myself and how to live a life full of character both on and off the field. I can't think of any other scenario where you can see people from such diverse backgrounds able to connect in a way that we can connect at FCA. FCA teaches you to put Christ and others before yourself. Sagu, never say no to a lion. There you have it. Halftime is nearly over, just under a minute. You see the game stats, and the underlying story. Neither team shot well from the free throw line, gave up a lot of points. But the three point percentage is really what stands out to me. Sagu just not shooting well from long distance today.
nor short distance for that matter, 29%. Miserable 29% field goal percentage. Everything else is about uh, even. And here we go. Zegu still sticking to their motion. Offense, good pass by Mason down to Davis. Davis very excited that he got two points. Oh, very nice feed by Perry. Good conversion by Mackey. Davis, short, up to Anthony Black. Black, easy conversion. Lead is extended to nine. Kobe Rice, short, bounces around the rim. Bogle with the rebound. Sagu sitting back in defense. Wide open. Somebody missed an assignment. Black. It's two three-point, wide open three-point. Missed shots, but two offensive rebounds. Coach Delton Dill, visibly frustrated with his team. The youngsters just not getting it. Chemistry falling apart. The talent is there. No chemistry. Coach Gambling uniting his players just to keep doing what you've been doing. It's working. I'm not going to fix the ship if it's not broken. This is a, a, a difficult matchup for the Lions because it's so similar. These teams match up very well against each other. The speed is pretty much the same. And it's just going to take elbow grease and hustle to get a win. When two teams like that, this mirror each other, and they show up. And right now, Mac U just showing a little more elbow grease. Right there, you see another offensive rebound. Mason, crazy acrobatic shot, and they're going to count it and send him to the line for an and one. One shot. Sims works hard. Goes and gets it. Cam Hill cuts through. Gets hit on the side. Officials call it. Thank you, final 34 seconds. Call you. That's going to be two shots, I believe. Mackey gets a timeout. Timeout. Full timeout. And that's going to be a full timeout. 60 seconds.
Delton Dill you see urging his players just to play. Give me effort. I, I don't need to think he's at a place where he can draw anything up on the board just yet. He needs effort first. Go get a rebound. Get something. You're not trying hard. If I'm reading the lips right. Mac U with just more hustle so far. However, Cam Hill going to the line. Good free throw shooter. And he misses the first one. Wide open in the corner. Misses a three, in and out. Now, Lions look to, for the fast break. Hill, you can see much more comfortable in the up pace style. Lead is cut to eight. That's going to be an and one. Dominic Ford is going to the line. He gets the two. KO. Just swinging a little bit too much. Ford misses the free throw. Neither team shooting especially well from the free throw line today. Cam Hill just trying to make something happen. Penetrates, misses, but he's going to have to start converting free throws. both points from the free throw line. Perry bringing the ball up for Mac U. Mac U going to stay in this spread offense. Cam Cameron McGee, great defense, gets ahead, converts the easy layup. Now just a six point deficit for the Lions. Rim protector KO does his job. Cameron Hill gets in, but he gets it blocked. Thank you. Careless with the ball. Very fortunate to be able to reset the offense. Perry has it up top. Beauregard. Good pick. Beauregard uses the pick and converts. Rather long jumper, about 16 and a half feet. Mason penetrates, gets it out to McGee. Hill shoots a three, KO crashes, gets his hand on it, tips it back in. Great effort. Beauregard, filling it, but no good on that one. 
Sims trying to make something happen. Gets hit from behind. And that foul is going to go against Mac U. And that's Beauregard with his fourth foul. Mac U's leading score. Likely to come out of the game. And he does. Upshaw comes in. Hammonds comes in. That leaves Perry, Thompson, and Bogle. Sims, Hill, Mason, McMullen, and Davis in for the Lions. Hammonds. Officials blow the whistle before the action. It's going to be on the floor. Second Foul on Mc, no, yep, McMullen. That's his first foul. on Nick Mason. And they're going to get Darney Sims with a foul. Be interesting to see this underneath. Did it look like a lot of contact? Yeah. Gets him on the elbow. Bogle misses the first. Converts the second. Seven point deficit for the Lions. Cam Hill in. Sends it out to Sims. Sims converts the three point shot. Thank you and the patience offense. Swings it over to Upshaw. Upshaw to Bogle. Bogle takes a 14-footer. Misses. Lions ball. Hill comes up short, but there and he sends big with the offensive board. Hill looks off the three-pointer down to Davis. Davis on the corner, steps back, shoots. No good. McHugh brings it up, still being patient. Tried to squeeze it in down low to Hammonds. Sagu defense a little too much. McMullen over to. That's going to be ruled as a block on Hammonds. They give Nicholas Mason the two that goes with that. And then the extra one from the free throw line. Great move inside here by and 
pretty sure the ref called that because of the flop. Emmons did not wait for the contact. Khalil Thompson trying to make something happen. Does not. Sims, it's now five on four. Got to take advantage. McMullen, nope. Thompson gets back. Off the ball foul. Mason with a wild shot in the paint. No good. Bogle saves a long out of bounds. And Mac U converts. Referees just. Referees are just uh, confirming that that point does count. Looked like it may have been touched and that would have been a goaltending if it didn't go. Good pass by Hill. Davis converts underneath in the paint. Point blank. shot by Hammonds and that was a long shot that it would go in but Will Gibbons says I can shoot the three and there's a little bit of a scrum at midcourt, the officials are gathering together to talk it through. I think there is going to be a technical foul issued. Both coaches waiting to hear the official ruling. just waiting to see how they're going to report this. This conference of officials are taking quite a while to convene and get a, an official ruling out on this. I think they all want to uh, say what perspective they had. <laughs> and we see a little bit of the dupe there. Cam Hill did not actually push. Looked to be 
Khalil Thompson. Thompson with some award-winning acting going on there. And it appears he may have convinced the referees. We'll see. Still, no word yet. Actually, the referees did. And they're going to give Mac U. They, they did uh, call... And it hasn't been reported to us who, if it was on Cam Hill or Davis, but we can only assume that they put it on Cam Hill. You shoot two free throws to settle the technical foul. And it should go back to Mac U. Lions ball. Sims with an offensive rebound. Resets. Gets it back out. Foul Mac U. Close one. Texas Wesleyan coming down to the wire with USAO. We'll keep you updated on that one. It'll be a big win for Wesleyan. Nice move by Perry. Eight point lead, Mac U. Sheila comes up way short. Sims gets two, the long two-point jump shot. 
About 17 feet there. Upshaw travels. Anthony Black in for Upshaw. McHugh lineup is Gibbons, Black, Bogle, Perry, and Hammonds. Oh, great hustle. Sagu. Davis gets it, but Kashila gets the tip out. Hammonds kind of shoulders it off to Boggle. Boggle. Boggle gets the easy layup. Kashila tries to rein one in. He's just off today. Oh. And that was. Bongo trying to repay Hammonds. And the referees reversed the call. Say it's a charge. See this again. Bongo's in the middle. Gets it. He's got to maintain control. He does draw contact with Kashila ever so lightly. And now Sagu brings in the ball. Six-point deficit. Eight minutes left. McGee in the corner. No go. Kashila. We're going to get Kashila with the travel. That was William. It would have been blocked no matter what. William going reckless abandon. No defense provided by Darian Davis. McMullen tries to get a three to go, but no. McGee. Running with Perry. Bogle says, let's be very patient. We've got the lead. Gets it back to Perry. Perry to Bogle in the corner. After the black puts one up, gets the long rebound. Now they reset with a new shot clock. Three, no good by Gibbons. Davis just trying to make it work and he does with a little kiss off the glass. Gibbons comes up short again. Mogul tips it out for a long rebound. Perry collects it. Two Lions fall on the floor. They get back up. Yeah, 
Tagu needs a defensive stop. Darian Davis plays great defense. And then gives it up the offensive rebound and takes a swat at it. And a quick anticipation call by the referee. No contact really made. Very unfortunate for the Lions, making it tougher on themselves. Lions look like they are lacking energy. Ladies and gentlemen, Oklahoma City about to upset John Brown. Six seconds left for John Brown to pull off a miracle. We'll keep you updated. You see Matthew has four timeouts left. Zagu, two timeouts left. Pioneers take the lead. Waylon takes the lead here in the last few seconds. against Central Christian. Central Christian in 11th place out of 12 teams in the Sooner Athletic Conference. And they are very tough. They came into the Schaefer Center a couple of weeks ago and handed it to your Lions. 11th place. That, that just goes to show you that the Sooner Athletic Conference is so evenly matched up and down. Anybody can beat anybody on any given day. A lot of parody. And Central Christian misses the last second shot. Not back in action in the Schaefer Center. Thank you. It's another free throw. Puts him up nine. get McGee with the travel. I didn't see the travel. Anthony Black keeping his team in patience. Daniel William trying to make it happen down in the paint. They get KO with a foul. Big Bang with a nice stroke from the free throw line. Makes it a 10 point deficit for your Lions. USA wins against Texas Wesley. He tries to put up a layup and gets blocked. Mason. Nothing falling for the line. Thank you, Governor Fury. It's on a Thursday. It's sit back.
And there it is, Oklahoma City beats John Brown. I don't think that will knock John Brown out of second place, but it will put them more towards the middle of the pack. Creates more separation in the, a larger comfort zone for Waylon Baptist, sitting alone up top. Sims working hard down in the paint. Gets blocked three times. Like he gets it. owning the boards. Sagu not getting anything to drop. Anthony Black from the top, in and out. Late whistle. to go to count the bucket and give Nick Mason an extra shot. Playing patiently with this 11 point lead. Anthony Black, teardrop, 
gets it to fall. 13 point lead. Mac U calls timeout. Timeout. Full timeout. See the senior athletic up to date standings. Wendell Baptist moves to 13 and 2. John Brown moves to 10 and 5, which actually ties them. I thought they would be alone, but uh, Langston wins today. And now they are just a half game up in second place. USAO in Oklahoma City now move to a tie for fourth place. Very important because the top four teams will play the bottom four teams, but the top four teams get to host the bottom four teams. And then the last four teams do not make the conference tournament. And that loss for Texas Wesleyan puts them in the bottom, bottom four. So if playoffs were to begin today, Texas Wesleyan would not make it. So that would be a first in a very, very long time. Dunk by Daniel Williams. With a little bit of salt in the wound. Sims, they let go in. Easy bucket. Just under two minutes. It's not too late for a little Sagu miracle to happen. 30 seconds, Only down 11. Almost two minutes left to play. If we were to play it right, we'd make a comeback. They would have to show a lot more energy and effort than they have the rest of today's game. But not impossible. Both teams in the double bonus foul. Pretty soon. See if they can get some possessions with the clock turned off. Rebound, Davis. They get some quick scores in. Nick Mason. Mason gets his first one to roll in. Ten point deficit. This is how you make a comeback. Score when the clock is not moving. Be good to get a quick foul. See what they can do, how they react on the free throw line. Try to get a steal here and before he gets over half court. Need to stop the clock. Good steal, Nick Mason.
Mason loses the ball on the way to the basket. Possession arrow was in favor of Mac U. They created the steal. A lot of time ticked off the clock. And this is where the clock is not your friend. And they did what they wanted to create the steal, but still a lot of time ticked off the clock. Down nine. Got to get the possession. He traveled. But the referees are going to say he called timeout. Now watch, his foot drags right there. Referee's watching his hands, not his feet. Should have been a travel. You can see right there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you don't call a travel on that, but um, he didn't. The Lions are going to have to create either instant turnovers or stop the clock with fouls. This is the first. This is exactly what you need. Really need him to miss the second, too. Two by Davis. Gotta get a quick foul. Mason gets the foul. Now you gotta hope for the best. Hope they miss. Gibbons, not one of their prolific shooters. It'll be interesting to see what he does from the free throw line. Davis trying to create a little bit of a distraction, which is not legal. He can keep his hands up, but he can't jump up. Luckily gave him the win. McGee misses the easy point blank layup. At this point, you got to be looking to the three. Second time number 11, Derek Sims. Boger <laughs> misses. His first of two, exactly what you need to happen. And he gets the second. Got to shoot threes here. Defense. 
Can't wait. Easy score. That's about all she wrote for the Lions today. Just not their day. Couldn't get anything to fall. And Matthew wins both sides. At the conference, both meetings. We'll see the updated standings here in just a second. That moves Sagu on down the line, moves Macu up. And now, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you respect both teams as they gather at center court. Missing Jalen Patello today due to injury. There you see Segu moves down to a tie seventh place. So Oklahoma Panhandle State and Segu are in seventh and eighth place. Then America is still in 10th place. There you see the circle of prayer. We wish Mac you the best and the safe trip home. Well played, well executed. Coach Gamblin, fantastic job today with your team. There you see the end of the game stats. 13 point deficit. Sagu just could not get it rolling at all today. 36% field goal shooting, but only 14% from the three. Neither team shot well at all from the three percent, three point uh, line. Everything else washed out about the same though. Four free throws were shot by Matthew ultimately determine the game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we have a couple more games back-to-back. Uh, -back. So next Tuesday, we'll be on at 6 p.m. with the, another doubleheader, women's first, and then the men should be on right around 8 p.m. And they'll be hosting the local rivalry of Texas Wesleyan just down 287 a few miles big rivalry it'll be a big game both of these teams trying to at least make uh, and contend for the uh, Sooner Athletic playoffs right now Sagu's got to get the train back on the tracks I don't think they're going to even be able to consider being a host of the playoffs until they start winning a little bit, they got to be in contention to make the playoffs. But I'm sure Coach Delton Dill will get it together, get his boys back on the right track. That's what happens when uh, you got some youngsters very loaded with talent, but uh, the young inexperience is just showing its face right now. Well, thanks for watching. It's a really nice day. Hopefully you can catch the Super Bowl between the Los Angeles Rams and the Patriots. Go Patriots! <laughs> if you haven't figured it out, I'm a fan. But until Tuesday night, this is John Cookman with the Saggy Sports Network.